We start with the positive. Explain to me why the Knicks offseason actually does have some success to it. Well, first off, can you hype every piece I write? That would be great. Yes, I'm here for you. <laughs> uh, but listen, no, the case for what the Knicks did is they didn't panic, right? They went into the summer saying, hey, we're going to get Kevin Durant. We're going to get Kyrie Irving. We're going to have this super team. They even thought they were hoping to get Zion Williamson, right? That didn't work out. But what they did do was go out and spend money on short-term deals on guys that they can either trade or let go next summer and go back in the marketplace if, say, an Anthony Davis doesn't like New Orleans. Maybe they chase him, right? Uh, but they didn't tie themselves up to any Joakim Noah-type long-term contracts or Tim Hardaway Jr. long-term deals, ones that would clog their books up for a long time and prevent them from getting back in the marketplace anytime soon. Okay, let's do the unfortunate side of your <laughs> article, which, of course, like I said, you can check this out right now on ESPN.com for more details. But... Where did they go wrong, the Knicks? Uh, I would say in the expectation game, right? If the Knicks hadn't spent the season, you know, David Fisdale back in December said, the perception around this franchise is different. Players think about us differently now, right? James Dolan back in March declared on radio here in New York that the Knicks were going to have a great summer. They were hearing good things from star players around the league. If people want to come play for the Knicks. Well, it certainly didn't work out that way, right? And even the Zion Williamson thing kind of got out of the way. And, you know, they didn't get ahead of that with the fact that the Knicks only had a 14% chance of winning the lottery despite being the worst team in the league, right? So if they had not let the expectations for what they were going to do get so high and they had not, you know, flan fanned those flames themselves, perhaps they could say, hey, we're being prudent and practical. But the fact that they let everything get ahead of them and say, hey, we're going to everything's going to be great. We're going to have a super team now in New York. The fact that the Nets now have it, especially instead of them, it's hard to justify the way it turned out. Yeah, it really does add insult to injury for Knicks fans. Greeny, what do you guys think over there? Well, I, I like this topic very much, and it is an excellent piece. I'll hype it for Bon Temps as well. It's, it's really well done. And you heard me say on the air yesterday, if, if you were with us, uh, on both the morning and afternoon editions of Get Up, I think the Knicks have a real chance to make the playoffs this year. And one of the reasons is exactly what they got wrong. The Knicks chose the wrong year to tank. And make no mistake, they tanked. I, I, was, I went to games where they had young players who were playing well and they took them out because they might win. That's a disgrace and it is actually an insult to the sport. So they chose to tank in a year, the first time ever, in which your chances of getting the first pick were only 14%. That's the huge mistake that they made. They could have been well further ahead if they had actually been developing some of these young players because they could have wound up signing exactly the same guys they have signed. So, Jay, Will, I will ask you, do you believe – the Knicks have had a good, bad, or indifferent offseason. I think they had a good offseason. I, I, I think Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving not going to the Knicks was probably the best thing ever to happen to them because it reset expectations. So now, I'm not a fan of setting expectations so high, like Tim just said, uh, to the point where everybody thinks you're going to have this crazy team when you shouldn't set the bar. Uh, them getting R.J. Barrett in the draft, them getting Julius Randle, them getting a lot of players on one-year deals with the team option on the second year, them being able to pull this off. I, 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 it, not going to Kawhi because the chances are you're going to waste time on things with Kawhi because he's not coming to New York. You recognize that because there's no partnership with the Kevin Durant or somebody else. I like the moves. It's just from now on, it's like just promote being prudent and practical and being patient. Like I, 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 Watching Nick fans on the, the emo, emotional roller coaster over the past two months, over the past 20 years, for you guys has been crazy if you set expectations the way they should be. Well, the Bond Temp said it exactly right. The, the owner of the New York Knicks is the one who set those I expectations yes. on the radio earlier in the year. Very quickly, though, what is the upside of signing all these guys to short-term deals? Because what it makes a lot of people think is are they now waiting out Giannis? That's the next big free agent. Two years from now, Giannis will be, get a chance to be a free agent. And I read a million oh. stories saying the Knicks now are putting themselves in position to be in the running for Giannis. Just of course as they you were. are. Of course you are. But what do you mean, of course but, you are? But, How many times can you do that? I said, but here's my thing. Nobody internally needs to say that. Let people run away with narratives. Nobody there says that, though. You always target the biggest free agents if that's what you want. But you don't come out and you say that. And all these guys on these one-on-one -on -one year deals, it's a one-year audition. If not team option, we don't have to pay you. We still have cap space to go after big-time free agents year to year to year. I, I think the offseason has been fine. I wouldn't say good, but it's been fine for the Knicks. I don't think they're making the playoffs this year. I think R.J. Barrett's going to be sensational. I think that's, that's your starting point. I think the bigger starting point, if you want to incentivize the opportunity – to get free agents, big name free agents, to come play in your organization, you need to show some signs of stability. Who your coach is, who's in your front office, you need to have a clear cut plan and how you wanna execute that. It seems like the Knicks, by the way, have finally started down that path of having some consistency. They've gone through far too many coaches. You've had uncertainty in the front office. And because of that, it, it, it looks dysfunctional and it seems like disarray. You can get past, I think even James Dolan, if over the next two seasons 
you have a team that is improving and maybe he's on the cusp of trying to make the playoffs and you have a centerpiece like R.J. Barrett that you can start to build around. There's something else that happened that I actually have to confess as a fan of the sport I like, even though I, I, my credentials as a, a fan of the New York Knicks all my life I consider to be intact. But as a fan of the sport I like, Kevin, and Kay, uh, Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving yep. chose the Nets. You tell me if I'm saying this correctly because you're much closer to them than I am. I believe part of the reason they did is because they didn't tank. Because they went out there and played young guys and played well and showed you, hey, we've got a good coach. We all think David Fisdale is a good coach, but how would you know? His team won 14 games last year. So they went out and showed you they have a good coach. They showed you signs of life with young players. They showed you, no, we're not going to lose on purpose. We're going to go out there and try and win and still have cap space and bring you in here. I think that was a factor, and if that means – an end to tanking as we know it, or at least a, diminishing, a, a, a diminution of tanking as we know it, then I am totally in favor of it. It was three years ago that I think Sean Marks traded Thaddeus Young and, and got Karis LeVert. And I, I think them really putting a lot of their eggs in the basket of young players, stability, creating a new narrative, a new marketing collateral yeah. around the Nets, too. Like, the Nets are trending. Like, and if you, if you live in the tri-state area, you recognize that. You see which way they were going. And, Sean, it goes back to your stability question. The stability with Sean Marks is way more, way more relevant than what was happening and occurring with the Knicks. Right. And I think that that goes back to whether we're looking at the Kawhi Leonard situation here. It's the one thing that I would hold against the Lakers has been instability in the front office and seemingly disarray. Uh, it versus what you see with the Clippers or the Raptors. Uh, and I think the same thing when you look at the New York Knicks. Any great organization, you cannot have a winning team, whether you work in any industry, if, the, if your boss seemingly has lost control over everything that's underneath it. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports, highlights, and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.